Hello, my name is Donna Coxon. I'm a solution architect with Full Scope, and today I'm going to give you an overview of the Unit 4 PSA suite. So if you're looking for a project management solution within your Dynamics 365 environment, there are a couple of really good options. Within Dynamics 365, there are a number of different business applications, including sales, customer service, marketing, field service. Um, there is also a Microsoft project service business application and that project service automation is incredibly good for um, collaborating on projects and tracking projects through to resolution. However, you can also import the Unit 4 PSA Suite solution. And this is a really mature project management solution that offers you program and project management, resource management capability, human resource management, advanced opportunity management, together with some financials and project accounting and an employee portal. And on top of that, you can then use the Dynamics 365 capabilities to customise your environment further. Today, I'm going to show you the Unit 4 PSA suite and how that sits within the Dynamics 365 platform. So here we are within my Dynamics 365 environment, and you'll see that I still have access to my standard sales, customer service and marketing capabilities. But you can also see that I have the PSA suite modules as well. So I've got the program and project management area. I've got my HR functionality and I've got my financial functionality. For today's demo we're going to focus on the project management area within Unit 4 PSA Suite. So let's take a look at the account form. So here you can see I'm looking at my standard account form that you may already be familiar with from Dynamics 365 but because we have the PSA Suite solution within this environment I can now start to surface some of the fields that are available within that solution. So over here, for example, you can see that I've added three fields which come from the PSA suite solution, which show um, some information relating to project revenue. So I can see my WIP and I can see revenue, project revenue for this year. Similarly, over on the right hand side, not only do I now have visibility of my contacts and opportunities that are linked to this account, but if we scroll down, I can now see all of the ongoing projects that are related to this account as well. If we take a look at one of these opportunities, again, you'll see the standard um, Dynamics 365 opportunity form. But again, now we have the ability to track any projects that are directly associated to this opportunity. So let's have a look at how we create a project. We can create a project in the same way that we create any other records within Dynamics 365. We can use the Quick Create, we can create a project directly from within the subgrid on a form, or we can go into our projects view and create a project here. Within the project form, we can still take advantage of the business process flows, so we can make sure we're driving users through a best practice process for um, managing and delivering a project. We can enter a project name, and then one of the really powerful tools of the PSA suite is the ability to create project templates. So if you have standard types of projects that you deliver frequently, what you can do is you can actually build out the full work breakdown structure as a template and you can reuse that as you create projects. So this will save a lot of time building out your work breakdown structure each time. So for example, here we'll choose a standard consultancy template. I can put in a start date if I know the start date or if we're just in the planning phase we can leave that blank. I have the ability to choose what kind of project this is. So is it a fixed fee project? Is it an ad hoc project? Is it a maintenance project? So you can create different types of projects. We can associate our project to an account and you can also select the legal entity that this project relates to as well as any cost center information. As soon as I save my project, it generates a unique number identifier for the project. It will start to build out the work breakdown structure based on the project template that we selected. You'll see that there are lots of other fields that we can capture here. So things like, is it associated to a program? Do we already have our start and end dates? Who are our principal contacts? But also, which opportunity does it relate to? Within the project form itself, if we move down to the details view, we can see that the work breakdown structure has been built out based on our template. So the system has automatically created each of the different tasks that have to happen as part of this type of project and associated the relevant budget and cost information to that as well. Within the project form, we can also see the financial tab, which will start to track um, our budget. So we can see what our budget is based on our work breakdown structure. 
and we will be able to start to track our actuals here. So I can see this project is 196 hours. And as we start to log time against this project, these figures will begin to update. So let's take a look at that project budget in more detail. If we go to the Chevron at the top, we can now navigate to the other areas that relate to the project. So if we look at the project budget, this is where we can really start to tweak and finalize our work breakdown structure. We've created this work breakdown structure based on a project template, but if we want to, we can remove these lines, we can add additional lines in, and we can start to extend and finalize this project and all of the tasks that need to, need to happen in order to deliver it. And we can do that here simply by adding and deleting lines, or even just going in and amending the lines that are there by default. At this stage, I can see the type of role needed to deliver each of these different pieces of work. But if I want to, I could actually go and request resources directly from the budget screen and actually allocate resources against these items. When we save that budget, that will now create the baseline, which is saved to the project and converted to our forecast. So let's go and take a look at our project Gantt chart. So you'll see within the Gantt chart, that it's automatically pulled through all of the items from our budget and our work breakdown structure. And it's created the items on the Gantt together with the type of role that we need to deliver this actual work. The great thing here is that you can just drag and drop these items. So if you want to extend the duration of a piece of, a piece of work, you can simply drag it and make it longer. If you want to create relationships between things, you can simply draw links between different items. So very easy to use, very easy to update this. Once you're happy with your Gantt chart, you're happy that everything is correct, you can save it and you can now update your budget and your forecast. So that you know that your, your, your project Gantt chart, your budget, your forecast are all aligned and in balance. So now you need to start assigning some resources to your project to deliver this work. You can either allow a project manager to go in and assign resources or you may have a central resource manager. So let's go in and have a look at how a resource manager might add resources to a project. If we go into our utilization sheet, so the utilization sheet will show us all of our resources and their utilization and their availability. So here I can see on the left hand side a list of all of the resources and by week what their utilization looks like. Anything in yellow is still waiting to be approved. Anything in red is showing that a resource is overutilized. What we can do is we can filter as well, so you can create different filters by teams or groups. So if I just want to see the utilization for the UK team, I can filter on UK team. Similarly, you can change the date range as well. So if you want to see availability for resources for the last week of October for a particular project, you can just change the date range to filter on those dates to see what resources you have available to deliver any particular projects. If you want to start assigning resources to projects, over on the left hand side, we can see all of the work that is waiting to be scheduled. And here I can see all of the work for consultants waiting to be scheduled. And we can see at the bottom here, the project that we just created for the Toyota investment requirement. And we can see that there is some work needed for an account manager, and that's the demonstration. And then there are a number of tasks needed to be assigned to consultants. So what I'm going to do is assign the demonstration work to um, myself, to Ben. And I can do that just by dragging that item over to that particular resource. And we can see now that that piece of work has appeared here. Similarly, if we want to assign some of this work to, a, to another resource, we can simply drag this over. So if I drag the first task to Vincent, we can see that that's now been added. And I'm going to drag these other tasks over as well. And now if we expand that particular project, we can see all the tasks that have been assigned to Vincent. And also we can see how they appear on the utilization chart. So we can see exactly where that work has been applied. You can also split activities. So if you do have activities that need to be done by multiple resources, you can split them between multiple resources as well. And also, if you need to reassign them, you can simply right click on your activity and just reassign to another resource. OK, so now we've actually assigned that work to some individuals. Let's save our changes 
and take another look at our Gantt chart to see how that's been updated. So now we're back in our Gantt chart and now I can see against each of the activities in our work breakdown structure, the name of the resource who will be delivering each piece of work has automatically been updated based on those assignments that we just made in the utilization sheet. Another really useful area within the PSA suite is the performance report. So here I can start to track my budget, my actuals and my margins. So here I can see by each activity exactly what the budget is, what's been delivered to date, what's been invoiced. And what you can also do is you can include the forecast information as well. So by flagging the include forecast checkbox, I can now start to track my budget, my actuals and my forecasts in one simple screen. This allows me to see the delta between my budget, my baseline and my forecast. You can also see a graphical representation of that as well. And you'll start to see that change as we deliver work. So let's do that. Let's start to add some time against this project. And there are lots of different ways that we can add time within the PSA suite. So a resource can go into the timesheet directly within the application and add time. So here in the timesheet, this is the calendar view. You'll see that we can actually pull in appointments from Outlook as well. So we can synchronize this calendar with our Outlook calendar. I can see that I've got 40 hours a week to book and I haven't booked any hours yet. We can also change user. So if we change to Vincent, we can now, because I'm project manager, I can log time on behalf of another resource. So we can create a new time entry. We can search for any of the projects that we're assigned to work on. Once we find the project, we can, we can find the item and then we can start to pick the activity. I can now capture the date that I did the work and how much work I did. And you'll see that time entry added to the calendar. The other thing you can do as well is you can copy and paste. So you can simply copy an item and paste it as well. So very easy for users to submit their time through here. There is also a portal they can use, so they can log into the portal and submit time through the portal. And there is also a mobile app that they can use on their devices where they can submit time as well. Another really nice feature within PSA Suite, which is particularly popular with legal organisations, is adding time via the timer. So if I'm working on a particular project, within the project itself, you'll see that there is an instant time entry button. This launches a timer where I can choose which activity I'm working on and I can start the timer while I'm working on that project. The timer is starting to count. I can carry on working, doing that work. And once I've finished, I can simply stop the timer and then I can save that time entry to that project. So as I said, particularly useful for legal organisations and professional services organisations who are billing time by the minute. So now if we return to our project form and have a look at our details, we can now see work that has actually been submitted. So time that has actually been delivered. We can now see that time has actually been submitted against the first three lines. And we can see the amount and our costs. If we go to our performance report, we now start to see the actuals that have been incurred together with our margin based on the time that has been entered against those activities. And again, if we look at our chart, we can now see the chart has started to be updated as those tasks are being delivered. Once the project manager is happy about the time that has been submitted, they can approve it. So if we go into the approvals area and select the date range that we want to look at, we can see by project all of the time that has been submitted that is awaiting approval. So here I can see the three items that we enter time for against our project. If I want to, I can make changes to this on the fly. So each of these has had eight hours logged against them, but if I actually want to invoice more or less, I can simply change that on the fly directly within the screen. Once I'm happy with how much time is going to be approved and submitted through to finance for invoicing, I can approve the time by selecting the approve tick box, and then I can approve those hours they will now be removed from my list and leave me with a list showing just the items that, still, that are still awaiting approval. Um, depending on your internal um, processes, you can have additional approval levels as well. So you can create line manager approvals or administrator approvals or whatever level of approvals you need against those time and expense entries. 
Okay, so we've we planned our project, we delivered some work against our project, and the next thing is to invoice the work that we've delivered. So if we have a look at all of our active projects, you'll notice at the top we have a button called batch invoicing. What that does is that, that is a workflow that allows us to retrieve all the items that have been approved and are ready to be invoiced. So the batch invoicing screen allows us to search for different types of invoices that we want to invoice, and it allows us to search on other criteria such as um, different projects, departments, teams, date ranges, etc. I'm going to pull back everything um, up until today, and I can see here that I do have a project with some hours that are waiting to be invoiced. As soon as I click on OK, a draft invoice will be created against our project for those hours that have been submitted. And our finance team can now approve those invoices. So here we have a list of all of the invoices and we have a separate view called Approve Invoices that shows all of the invoices that are awaiting financial approval. And at the bottom, we can see the invoice that we just generated. And if we drill into that, we can see the detail behind the invoice. Now, again, we still have the ability, if we need to, to make amendments to this invoice. So we can actually go through and amend this to make sure that we're invoicing the correct amount. Before we approve the invoice, we can preview it. So you can create a template here and see exactly how that will look. And once we're happy with that, we can tick the approved box and save those changes. We can then look at the journal entries and see that journal entries have been created for each of those line items on the invoice. And this is particularly useful if you then want to do some integration to your ERP solution. So you can actually pull these journal entries directly into your back office solution for your financial accounting. Let's go back and look at how our project has updated now. So back in our project, if we go and look at the financial information, we'll see the fields we saw earlier that were empty have now been updated. If we go to our details section, we can see exactly how much has been invoiced. If we go to our actuals area, we can see the items that have been created here based on what's been invoiced. And if we go to our invoices tab, we can now see the invoice that was created as well for those hours. There is also a revenue recognition process built into the PSA suite. So if you go to the revenue recognition area within your project, you can actually now start to update your percentage complete and you can choose to recognize revenue. So you can choose your financial period. Once you're happy with that, you can approve that for financial posting. So we've created our project. We've associated it to an opportunity. We've used a project template to build out our activities and our work breakdown structure. We used our Gantt chart to tweak and amend that work breakdown structure. We've assigned resources to those activities. The resources have submitted their time and expenses, which have then been approved and tweaked by the project manager. The finance team have then created draft invoices. They've approved and amended those invoices and submitted the invoices through to the customer. The journal entries have been created and are now available to export to our ERP solution. So all of that data has been collected throughout that process. And because it's the Dynamics 365 solution, you still have a whole host of dashboards that will allow you to track all of that information as you've gone through the process. So as a project manager throughout that project process, you're able to track your baseline, your budget, you're able to track your forecast and you're able to track your actuals and how they all link to each other. And with the PSA Suite solution, there are a number of dashboards that are available to you um, that will enable you to track your project, your revenue throughout that process. So that was a quick overview of the end-to-end -end project management process using the Unit 4 PSA suite. I hope you found it useful. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'd be delighted to help you on your CRM journey. Thank you.